You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Radical Islamic terrorism, a threat to peace in South Asia, says US President in India. Afghans hope for a peace deal with Taliban after a week-long reduction in violence. Six-member task force appointed by Sri Lankan government to investigate Easter Sunday attack. And weekend governance in Pakistan leading to escalating terrorism financing, says FSOS. Radical Islamic terrorism poses a growing threat to the world and the world powers are committed to fight against the menace. In his recently concluded visit to India, the US President Donald Trump said, that his country stood with India in the fight against radical Islamic terrorism. Let's see the significance of President Trump's statement for maintaining peace in South Asia. Nine eleven attack on World Trade Center. Lives lost 2,977. 2611 Mumbai terror attack. Lives lost 166. These two images show two horrific terror incidents perpetrated by the Islamic terrorist which has awakened the world to fight against the menace. Both the United States and India, which have been facing a severe threat from Islamic fundamentalism and terrorism, are committed to jointly fight against these terror outfits largely operating from Pakistan and Afghanistan. During his recent two-day visit to India, the US president laid emphasis on his commitment to fight against the radical Islamic terrorist along with India. The official tour aims to maintain peace in South Asia and rest of the world. Mr. Prime Minister Modi and I affirmed our two countries' commitment to protecting our citizens from radical Islamic terrorism. In a joint statement, India and the US called on Pakistan to ensure that the territory under its control should not be used as launching pad for terrorists. The statement condemned cross-border terrorism in all its forms. President Trump and Prime Minister Modi further called on Pakistan to expeditiously bring to justice the perpetrators of 2611 Mumbai and Pathan court attacks. Countries suffering from radical Islamic terrorism have called for concerted action against the dreaded terrorist groups including Jashi Muhammad, Lashkar-e Taiba, Hezbul Mujahideen, the Haqqani Network, D Company, Al Qaeda, ISIS, and Tehrik e Taliban Pakistan. While well, to discuss more about the implications of the recent tour on Indo US relations over counterterrorism, we are now joined by security expert from India, Dr. Subokamal Datta. So, what is your take on the joint statement released by the White House that specifically condemns terrorism in all forms and talks about bringing terror leaders to justice? This is a significant uh, statement. It came out in the joint statement of the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable President of the United States of America. I think this is a correct statement in the right direction. Uh, President Trump has said a couple of times during his interaction also, while addressing the press and otherwise also while he was delivering the speech there in Gujarat, that uh, Islamic terrorism or Islamic fundamentalism is a very big issue across the globe. And both India and United States of America is suffering from it and uh, it needs to be eradicated. It needs to be fought jointly. 
Donald Trump's assurance on America's commitment towards fighting radical Islamic terrorism gives a boost to Indo-American cooperation in fighting this menace. The cooperation, the continued cooperation and very strong cooperation between the two sides on terrorism that is also going to be and particularly with reference uh, with respect to Pakistan that I think is going to be an important issue. That the display of unity against terrorism by world's two largest democracies will certainly force Pakistan to reconsider its terror supporting policy as it is already facing extreme global backlash for sheltering terrorists. Pakistan has been under pressure from America and other countries to mend its ways and to uh, uh, give up its terrorist uh, practices, to abandon them and develop a, a more equitable and a more reasonable way of, of dealing. Peace-loving nations now seek urgent need for meaningful, credible, irreversible, verifiable and sustainable action against terrorists and terrorist groups. Hopes for the resolution of 18-year-old war have risen again as the planned week-long reduction in violence in Afghanistan has concluded on an expected peaceful note. The U.S. and Taliban are now due to sign an agreement deal that would lead to the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan. It is, however, far from clear in the prevailing volatile political climate that how Taliban and U.S. will ensure durable peace and stability in the war-torn nation, a report. Months of extensive discussions between the United States and the Taliban a number of floating assurance, but the story in Afghanistan continues to remain same. Attacks, counter-attacks, killings and collateral damages describe the fundamental story of past two decades of Afghanistan. But now there are hopes that this story will finally change as the United States and the Afghan Taliban are nearing a historic peace deal. The US and the Taliban are due to sign an agreement soon as a planned week-long reduction in violence in Afghanistan has concluded on an expected peaceful note, stirring fresh hopes for an end to the protracted conflict. The US Taliban peace deal will uh, mean a lot in the sense that they have been uh, negotiating with each other for more than a year now, more than even two years, almost two years now. And uh, in that sense, uh, they will uh, make some fresh grounds now. And a lot of issues which were there on the table uh, seem to have been worked out uh, between the two parties. Uh, and uh, for the first time, US and Taliban will agree to make a peace which will contribute to peace and pro prosperity in Afghanistan. This prolonged state of war has resulted in loss of countless lives and mass destruction of Afghan infrastructure and education. This agreement could represent a chance for peace and a pullout of thousands of US troops that have been in the country since US-led forces ousted the hardline Islamist Taliban from power in 2001. Afghan residents think that this deal can bring them a step closer to the end of country's decades-long war. However, they are still apprehensive about it. چون تا بین افغان ها سال نباشه سال بین آمریکا و طالب ها یک سال پروژه ای سک یک سال است که خلاصه با منافع دو جانب است ولی با منافع مردم افغانستان فعلا نیست The security situation in Afghanistan has declined from bad to worse in past few months and even signing of this deal cannot guarantee lasting peace in the war-torn nation there are high chances that Taliban leadership will not make the deal in a way that will require plenty of concessions on their part. The sense of uh, uh, patience on the Taliban side is also running out. They do not want this to drag on perhaps. That is why they have agreed to this deal. But we still do not know. That is what I was telling you that there are so many uh, pitfalls on the way. There are so many, I would say, uh, problems that they will have to encounter. 
uh, that you know it will be too early to say that this particular deal on 29th can open the door for meaningful sustainable peace in Afghanistan. Taliban leadership has never had a direct dialogue with the mainstream Afghan government and has always derided it as a puppet in the hands of the United States. So now it will be a sight to see for the world that how the two opposite forces, that is one mainstream and the other extremist, will coexist with each other. A new investigative team has been appointed by the recently formed Rajapaksa government of Sri Lanka to escalate the process of investigation in the Easter Sunday attacks. The decision for the formation of new team has come in the wake of dissatisfaction expressed by the Catholic churches with present steady process of investigation in the case, a report. The Sri Lankan government appointed a six-member task force this week to expedite the ongoing presidential probe into the devastating Easter Sunday terror attack that killed over 250 people. The decision has come to hasten the probe into the April 21 attack, which had proved crucial in his decisive electoral victory last November. Military has to be very strong because this is the only agency which can tackle with this uh, military, uh, I mean, uh, the national security issues. So after uh, that, uh, when the Gotabaya Rajapaksha is in power, uh, they have taken strong measures. The six-member team appointed by the government will help Sri Lanka's CIV to speed up the ongoing investigations and collect authentic information and evidence to take legal action against all those involved in supporting the extremists. The task force includes officials from various intelligence agencies and is headed by the Chief of Sri Lankan National Intelligence, Major General Jagat Alvis. The team also includes the Director of State Intelligence Service, Director General of Military Intelligence, Deputy Inspector General of Criminal Investigation Department, Director of Counter-Terrorism and Investigation Division and Director Legal of Sri Lanka Police. The entire investigating team has been instructed to submit weekly reports to the Defence Secretary Major General Kamal Gunaratni. The problem with is this kind of uh, appointed committees is that there is a, a possibility that they are being, you know, politicized because in the previous the two committees I mentioned, um, uh, they have been criticized, um, uh, alleging that they are, you know, uh, I mean, they are making use of the politics. I mean, politicizing the entire national security issues. So again, now I think uh, government has appointed, a uh, president has appointed the six-member task force committee. Again, some people are criticizing that, again, it, they may also politicize the issue. As the investigation is speeding up in Easter attack case, the alert security forces are not ruling out any chances of further Islamist attacks in the country. Investigators claim to have dismantled the major part of the network linked to the dastardly attack. Further, Sri Lankan authorities have also raked up a large network of terrorists operating in the country that includes small terrorist groups also. As a kind of radicalization and uh, I mean Islamist ideologies are uh, spreading all over South Asia. So even in Sri Lanka we have seen some kind of you know presence of uh, radical minds, radical groups in Sri Lanka. I don't think it will be politically correct to say these are the like terrorist group, presence of terrorist group. But yes, violent extremism is, uh, is there. Presence of violent extremism is there in Sri Lanka and they'll have to tackle it. Being transactional and borderless, terrorism is trying to undermine social harmony of countries with a multicultural society such as Sri Lanka and India in South Asia. Pakistan is playing an unpardonable role in this mission of jihadi terrorists by being a safe house for all the dreaded terrorist groups. A latest addition to its list of evil state guests is ISIS, which has officially announced a new Pakistan province just a few weeks back. The menace of terrorism remains to be the single biggest obstacle in upholding the peace and security for the entire South Asia. However, 
Pakistan has today been given the infamous title of terror state owing to the fact that it breeds and harbors some of the most dreaded terrorists in the world. Recently, FSAS, a think tank based in Europe, has held Pakistan accountable for supporting terrorist outfits on its soil and carrying out attacks in South Asian region, especially India. It has also blamed the country's damaged governance for providing an atmosphere to terror organization to hatch their destructive agendas, a report. Terrorism in all its forms continues to pose a direct threat to security and prosperity of South Asian countries and its people. A large number of terror organizations and militant groups are continuously plaguing the region with their violent activities and constant human rights violations. According to European Foundation of South Asian Studies, or FSAS, a think tank based in Europe, the tumultuous political environment of Afghanistan and Pakistan has weakened the governance, increasing corruption and instability in the region. This has created an atmosphere where major terror organizations are able to thrive and pursue their destructive agendas sponsored and aided by Pakistan Army and ISI across South Asia. The militant organizations are too strong. They have big support within the army. Besides this, the Pakistan's main plank is promotion of militancy, uh, you know, containment of democracy, rule of law in Pakistan, so that military could continue to play a greater role. And uh, these organizations are too powerful. These terrorist organizations do not operate in vacuum. There are perpetrators sitting behind the curtains, facilitating them with complete financial and political support. The FSAS report further states that the funding of terror organizations started during Cold War era, when both the Eastern and Western camps provided funds, training and logistical support to mercenaries whose armed struggle fell in line with their interest. However, the report says this phenomenon no longer works, but it's still present in Pakistan where Pakistan's Inter-Service Intelligence Agency sponsors various nefarious activities in different parts of the world, especially India. Pakistan has always been at the vortex of terrorism and constantly provides funding to develop terror training camps to groups like Jaish Muhammad and Lashkar-e Taiba in order to hatch terror activities against India. Since terror is uh, born in Pakistan, and uh, terrorists are trained in Pakistan, they naturally require funding. And the terror funding which Pakistan does, in fact, the entire terror funding to Pakistan comes from the Middle East and uh, the, uh, the heads of the terrorist organizations, they distribute the money to these terrorists and in turn, they give them the military training and the training which is required to cause terror activities in the country. For decades, Kashmir has been the biggest victim of Pakistan-sponsored terrorism. And one of the gruesome attacks remains the Pulwama attack of 2019 that was conspired in terror launch pads of Jash e Muhammad situated in Pakistan's Balakot. To avenge the attack which killed 40 personnel of the Central Reserve Police Force in Jammu Kashmir's Pulwama district, the Indian Air Force carried out its preemptive air strikes on Balakot terror training camps of Jash which is also known as Front Organization of Pakistan's ISI. Targeting Pakistan's non-uniform soldiers, India in an intelligence-led operation struck the biggest training camp of JEM in Balakot, eliminating a large number of terrorists. We had received intel information that after Pulwama, jaish e Mohammed is planning to have more Fidayin attacks on different, different places in the country. And that is why it was very important to, um, uh, to ensure that these terrorists are not successful in crossing the borders and that we should uh, destroy these terrorists there and then at their place of residing. And that is why this Balakot was very, very strategic, very important. However, Pakistan was not ready to recognize its role in allowing the presence of terrorist camps in Balakot. After 40 days of the attack, Pakistan authorities allowed a group of journalists 
working for foreign news organizations and foreign diplomats based in Islamabad, the access to the site of the airstrike. The time taken by Pakistan to give access to the attack site clearly signifies the notorious intentions of Islamabad as it tried to hide or erase important evidences of Balakot attack by not allowing the immediate access to the attack site. Well before the attack and in public knowledge, in public domain, in Pakistan, very many websites were publicly saying, you know, this uh, place is uh, seeking young men to come, so and so, the world renowned, renowned if I may use the word, notorious terrorist, the handler of many Mumbai like attacks, was calling young men in Pakistan to come and join. They were also openly appealing, saying these many number of people could, you know, be trained. Old trainers were all being called from retirement to come and train and so on. So if you really want to do some homework on it and somebody went about searching uh, websites, they could probably put a finger on how many people were going to be trained from the 25th of February. In that geolocation? Haji. Oh, okay. So it actually it doesn't uh, require much of an exercise. That information in, you know, you can collect various sources to give you approximate numbers. Mm -hmm. So the government is not talking about it because we're not talking about it. That's it. But for anybody who's act actively following all this, you could probably approximate a number. Although Pakistan repeatedly denies the presence of terrorists in its territory, India has time and again exposed its complicity in aiding and sponsoring terror activities on its soil. And reports of imminent think tank like these of FSAS reek of Pakistan's duplicity. A joint counter-terrorism military training exercise between India and UK culminated in United Kingdom this week. The fifth edition of the training exercise is called Exercise Ajaya Warrior 2020. Lectures, demonstrations and drills related to counter-insurgency and counter-terrorist operations were rehearsed and executed jointly in urban and semi-urban areas as part of the training. Have a look. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. <laughs>